Episode 4 of My Perfect Stranger begins with Hei Jun showing the matchbox to Yoon Young. She tells Hei Jun where she picked it up but doesn't divulge any further details. As she can't be open over what she's doing, Hei Jun similarly refuses to tell her what's actually happening in this time period, ending in a stalemate between the pair, Hei Jun heads out into town and contemplates the events that have happened so far. He specifically centers on the Min Su incident, and with his arrest occurring, it seems the past is changing but he's similarly dead set on finding what Yoon Young might be hiding. Hei Jun gives his statement at the police station to Detective Beck and warns Min Su that he should stay locked up for a while. Pointing out the future murders as a reason. Hei Jun heads back home where he finds Yoon Young asleep on the sofa. She's not really, but is just pretending and soon follows him outside so the pair can eat, they head to the cafe, but neither are in a joking mood. They sit and eat pastries together, and Yoon Young is shocked at how good they taste. After, they rush back home in the rain and Yoon Young does manage to sleep pretty well all things considered, and even has a message from Hei Jun, giving her instructions for getting ready for school, including heading over to Sunny's place. Sunny's mom is overworked and completely disregarded by the rest of the family, while Yoon Young is flabbergasted to be in front of her younger family members. She tries to keep it together, especially when her grandmother gives her lunch. As they walk to school, Yoon Young has a newfound respect for her mom, especially as she realizes that soon -ae was living her own dream through her daughter, enjoying their moments together. Hei Jun speaks to Yu Biam Ryong, the guy who happened to have the matchbox last episode and another on the list of suspects for Hei Jun. He learns that these matchboxes are apparently used by many of the kids in school to add a love letter inside and hand them to people you like. That makes the task of figuring out the killer all the more difficult, Hei Jun follows Biam Ryong though and finds the kid is keeping more than a few secrets, including an empty envelope that's inside one of the toilet stalls. Similarly, Hei Siab is also a bit suspect, given he too has one of the matchboxes but as he's only recently transferred, he gives a decent enough reason for having it in his possession. For now, Hei Jun gives him the benefit of the doubt, but he's also another that's on the radar for now, especially when he heads away from the group in the woods and happens to have a key round his neck. Hei Siab ends up running into Sun Ae and as fireworks start between them, Yoon Young gets involved and tries to stop the pair. She's too exhausted though to do anything and as she collapses on the floor, she finds herself looking up at Hei Jun, who's less than happy to find her trailing behind. When the two classes are back together again, it's Hei Siab who catches the attention of everyone. He stands up with Biam Ryong's guitar and prepares to play but he's never done it before. However, he's an absolute natural and with the pick in his hand, starts playing a lively jam. He even sings too, catching the attention of everyone, even Soon Ae. One person who's not enthused by all this is Mi Suk. She's already got a lot on her plate, given the situation with her family and her mom acting frostily. Hei Jun is similarly conflicted, and as the kids all dance and sing obliviously, he goes over what he's found out so far and how difficult this is going to be to solve. Lo and behold, the first victim, a young woman, happens to show up in the woods. This is Lee Ju Young, and as we're two days away from the first murder, Hei Jun does what he can to try and keep an eye on her, she's actually a new transfer student teacher, and a senior at Seoul National University's Korean Language and Literature Department. The kids all ask for her to sing to them all and she eventually caves to the peer pressure. During lunch, more of these Bong Bong Cafe matchboxes are given out and Yoon Young realizes that it's a common thread. She knows that this is connected to Hei Jun somehow, but while she shoots him a suspicious glance, Hei Jun turns his attention to Ju Young. She claims that her relative lives in town but we quickly learn that this is an outright lie. She doesn't have any friends or family in town, but Hei Jun plays along and all the same and even hands over his number, asking her to contact him if anything untoward comes up or if she needs him. Outside, Mi Suk speaks to Yoon Young and questions what happened to her brother. Yoon Young squares up to her but Mi Suk points out that she's already discovered her weakness. It's clearly Sune. Hei Jun hurries out when the principal calls and claims he can't get through to Ju Young, now, Yoon Young seems to recognize her from somewhere but can't quite out her finger on what until she has a light bulb moment. Searching through the novel Mi Suk wrote, it becomes clear that she was referencing Ju Young by her description. But why? For what reason? Min Su is released from prison that night, and while searching for him, Hei Jun and Yoon Young end up colliding in the street. Having read Mi Suk's novel, Yoon Young knows that something bad is going to happen. Mi Suk referred to Ju Young as her first beautiful death, so the pair talk and finally decide that now is as good a time as any to be honest with one another. 
during the epilogue, Min Su, in the present, meets up with his sister in their old house. There's a witness to the crime but Mi Suk reminds her brother that they're walking into her trap.